All right, guys, so today's topic, we'll be looking at factors, multiples, powers, and sequence, or sequences. Now, can anybody remind us what are factors? Anybody remember what are factors? Anybody remember what factors are, students? No, sir. Okay. All right. Give me a second, guys. Let me try to assist a student with something. All right, guys, sorry about that. Um, so as I was saying, um, I was asking you guys if you know what factors are, nobody seemed to remember. All right, um, remember what we say that the, the, when you get the product of, um, when you get the product, the result you obtain from multiplying two or more things, the things that you multiply, they're actually the factors. All right, so if you multiply three times two and you get six, the three and the two are factors. Everybody get that? So let's just look at some definitions and this will help you to understand what is happening. So definition is a number that divides exactly into a second number without a remainder is called a factor of the second number. So for instance, if you have six, six divided by, by three, what would be the answer? Anybody? The answer student. Ms. Cummings, what would be the answer? Two, guys. Two, sir. Two, sir. Two, right. So did we have any remainder? No, sir. All right, that's what we mean by it divides exactly. So it, once it has no remainder, that means it divides exactly into the number. So the number that divides exactly into six would be three. So three is a factor of six because it can divide six without a remainder. You follow what I'm saying? 
everybody. Now, if you divide six by two, two would also be a factor of six because you can divide six by two without a remainder. And if you divide six by itself, you would still be able to divide exactly by six because you would get one and no remainder. So the numbers that divide into six are factors of six. Is that clear, guys? Raise your hand if you understand what I'm saying, please. All right. So, so the factors of six are the numbers that go into six, but six, the, the six, which is a number being divided, would be a multiple of the factors three, two, one, and six, because if you multiply those numbers, you, get, you can get six. So hence, six would be a multiple of those numbers. All right, so we say that the second number that is divided without a remainder is called a multiple of the first number. Is everybody clear on the definition now of what is a factor and what is a multiple? Guys, can you respond so that I... Yes, sir. Right. Okay, so with that in mind, we should now can um, understand that if we divide 3, 7, 9, 21, if we divide 63 by these numbers, it can go into it without remainder. So these are factors of 63. So um, 63 is a multiple of these numbers, right? Now it means that you could count by three up to 63, or you can count by seven up to 63, you can count by nine up to 63, or you can count by 21 up to 63. So it means that these numbers, 63 would be a multiple of these numbers. Now, every number has one and itself as factors, as a factor. All right, what that means, it means that one can go into every number and the number itself can go into to the number. So every number, one and itself can go into them. That means that one and the number itself is a factor of the number. Is that clear, guys? Is that clear? Raise your hand if it is understood. All right, good. Now, if a number has only one and itself as a factor, then it is called a prime number. So if I ask you guys, what is a prime number? A prime number is a number that only has one and itself as a factor. That means only one can go into it and it's one and itself can go into it. So those numbers are called prime number. Um, I may have probably asked before for people to tell me prime numbers. So I am going to ask now for you to tell me some prime numbers from one to 20. Um, may I, I guess I'll have to call on you guys because some of you are reluctant to respond. All right, Mr. Campbell. Mr. Campbell, are you there? Yes, sir. All right. Would you like to tell us some factors that are prime numbers from 1 to 20? Um, that are prime numbers. Two. So we have to go all the way from one to twenty, right? Well, you can just tell me about two or three of them. I'll ask somebody else to tell me some others. All uh, right. So um, two, three, and five. All right, two, three, and five. Miss Cummings, can you tell us some others? 
Um, seven, nine, and eleven. Um, uh, think about nine again. Would nine have only one on itself as a fact? Oh, no, no, sir. Right. Said seven, 11, and 30. Right, so nine would not be a prime number. All right, Miss, Miss Scott, would you like to tell us some more from, go ahead. Not hearing you, Miss Scott. I'm not sure what is happening with Miss Scott. Is your mic working? All right, Javon, would you like to tell us some factors? Not factors, some prime numbers, rather. All right, Miss Scott type 17 and 19. Is it that your mic is not working, Miss Scott? Can you respond in the chat? All right, so, so from one to 20, we have two, two, three, five, seven, 11, 13, and we have 17 and 19. All right. All right, guys. So um, if the Zoom time run out, you must just log back in after you finish. All right. So we say one is not a prime number. Does anyone know why one is not a prime number? It is right there. Sir, it is not a prime number because it has only itself as a factor. A factor, right. So generally, we don't use one as a prime number. All right. So a prime factor is an is a a prime factor is a factor which is a prime number. So any number which is a prime number and, and a factor of another, we call it a prime factor. All right, LCM. Can you remind us what, what is LCM students? Let me add Lowest common multiple. Yeah. Lowest common multiple. And what exactly does that mean, Miss Common? I didn't hear the question. What 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 it really means to find the lowest common multiple? How do we go about finding the lowest common multiple? What do we look for? So you look uh, first. You look at the denominators to see if they are different, and if they are different, you find the lowest multiple that both numbers can go into. All right. Now, if we if we are finding the LCM, it not only have to be with denominators. You know, you can be given a set of numbers, and you're asked to find the LCM. The lowest common multiple. Anybody who can give me a definition on what you think a lowest the lowest common multiple would be? Can somebody give a definition for it? Or somebody can somebody describe what you would consider the lowest common multiple of a set of numbers? Anybody? 
Miss Waysom, would you like to shed some light on what we are talking about? Good evening, sir. Um, it's basically the same thing as Miss Cummings said, sir. Um, most common multiples to me would have been the smallest number, which all denominators can be divided into without a remainder. All right, all right. But as I was saying before, I don't want you to limit the lowest common multiple to just the denominators a fraction, because not only when you're dealing with fractions, I mean, most of the times, yes, when you're dealing with fractions, you may want to find the LCM, but you could just very well ask to find the LCM of a set of numbers, not necessarily relating to fraction. Is that clear, Ms. Waysom? All right. Yes, sir. So we'd have said generally numbers. Right. So generally, so the LCM of a set of numbers is the smallest number. That smallest number is a multiple. It's the smallest number into which each number in the set will divide exactly without a remainder. So it is the smallest multiple of the set of numbers. Right? Now, the LCA may be found by inspection or by table of primes. I, I would have mentioned that before, and I think I may have gone through some examples with you. All right. Now, if we have 4, 5, 10, 20, now we can just look at them and determine that the LCM is 20, and that would be finding the LCM just by looking at it. So we call that finding the LCM by inspection. Now, so all numbers including 20 can divide 20 without a remainder. So we see that 4, 5, 10, 20 can divide into 20. So 20 is the smallest number that they all can go into. And so 20 would be the LCM. All right, now with that said, we want to look at the highest common factor. Now, the highest common factor is also a confusing area for students because more oftentimes some students mix up the LCM with the highest common factor. Can somebody explain to me what the what the highest common factor is? All right, let me call on someone. Ajeno? Are you there, Mr. Ajeno? Okay, there's some factors that would have been the, um, the biggest number. All right, give, give me a second, though, Miss Wilson. Let me find out from Mr. Ajeno what he has to say about that. So, Ajeno? Uh, Miss 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 Trivia, are you there? No, oh, Miss Trivia seems to have fell off. I'm not getting any response from Miss Ajino. All right. Um, we have a new member to the class, Miss Andrews. Are you hearing us? Can you respond? By un by using your mic, unmute the, the mic and say something to us, Ms. Andrews. Are you hearing us? If your mic is not working, can you please type something in the chat so that I know that you are with us and you are hearing us. It's Andrews. All right, so um, Miss Wilson, you were saying something about the highest common factor. You can 
Could you just um, yes, sir. Yeah, go ahead. Sir, for example, you're finding the multiples of um four and eight, right? So um it would have been the bit say you're finding the multiples of four and eight between between four and twenty. Uh, uh not twenty, let me, but let me write what you're saying. So yeah. you're saying you want four and eight. Um, you're finding the multiples of four and eight between um four and um forty for each of them, sir. Then the then the, the then the highest common factor would have been the biggest number, which um is common to both the multiple of four and the multiple of eight, just the same. So you look for the highest number, and that would have been the highest common factor to both. All right, so you're, uh, you're saying that the highest common factor of four and eight, what would what would be the highest common factor of four and eight, Ms. Wilson? Um, 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 let, me, let me write it down so and see if I can figure it out. Okay. All right, in the meantime, Ms. Ms. Um, Scott, would you like to say something? Uh, Ms. Green, are you following with us? So, so the, the first question was explaining. Um, could you say that again, Ms. Green? I didn't quite hear it just now. All right, I'm not, I, I guess, Miss Green, you're, you're, 